What's up everybody, Brochero here, and we have a review ready for Thor Ragnarok. The first part of this review is going to be completely spoiler free. We're just going to talk about some of the stuff in the trailers and what we generally liked about the movie, but we're going to be as vague as possible. And then we're going to have a spoiler warning pop up, and then we're going to be talking full on plot details, what happens, spoilers, what we think about certain things that happen, everything. So yeah. we're going to spoil the whole movie. So if you don't want to see that, just stop watching when we give the spoiler warning. And if not, it's your fault. Well, to start things off, Thor Ragnarok is easily the best Thor movie today. By a oh, wide yeah. margin. Like, there is almost no question. I mean, Thor 1 was great. Thor 2 was all right. It had its moments, but it also had its not good moments. It had a lot of not good nicely. moments. <laughs> but Thor 3 is constantly fun, keeps your attention, and just is hilarious. And they did a really good job with the action in this one. I mean, they've done oh, yeah. a good job on the action in the other ones too, but not this, on this, this one. This one was especially. a totally new level, yeah. yeah. And the characterizations, like how characters relate to each other, was really well done. And the dialogue, a lot of it. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was so funny. Yeah. The movie was hilarious. And all the actors did a very good job. Chris Hemsworth was obviously just completely in his element and had a great time filming this. Uh, Mark yeah. Ruffalo did his normal, awkward, weird, <laughs> charming guy thing. Uh, I don't know the actress's name for Valkyrie, but she did a great job. I love Valkyrie. Yeah. Jeff freaking Goldblum was the most Jeff Goldblumy Goldblum he's ever been. <laughs> Easily. He that was God, so, he was one of the best parts. He was yeah. uh, probably my favorite new character. Uh, Anthony Hopkins is always fantastic. Tom Hilston kind of... He, he wasn't as charming in this one as he was. He's more like the butt of the joke more times than not, which was, it worked for this yeah, movie, like, but it was also like weird seeing his history as like the charming, mischievous god of mischief. But seeing him as the butt of the joke this whole movie was kind of like a, knocking him down a peg from the last movies, which was kind of good for him. Yeah, like he, as a character, he needed that. And Kate Blanchett did a hella good job. Now, full-on spoiler warning. If you haven't seen the movie and don't want spoilers, stop watching. We're starting off with the biggest spoiler of them all, I did not see Odin dying. No. Yeah. Like, I, that no. got me completely off guard and made me tear up. And it was just overall sad. Well, they, they didn't see it happening either. I mean, he was just like, hey, boys, I'm about to die now. Yeah, I mean, that was more or less yeah. it. I mean, I, I guess Anthony Hopkins was a little too expensive. Or maybe they're just wrapping up that storyline. I don't like, know. Yeah. Who knows? But I mean, he may just be going into a really deep Odin sleep. We don't know. Yeah. But, <laughs> either way, Odin passed on. And him passing on unleashed Hela, apparently. And yeah, who's their sister now? Yeah, Hela's yeah, oldest I mean, daughter. It no. works because uh, it was a her weird. being Loki's daughter would be a little weird because she's older than him. Yeah, but <laughs> but I mean that it was a decent way to kickstart the plot and everything. Hela shows up, easily flexes her power in the first five minutes by breaking Mjolnir. Yeah. I mean, she just catches it and crushes it. That's it. Yeah. Like you we, never see Mjolnir again. We saw it in the trailer, oh, yeah, but Mjolnir. I did not think it was going to be happening that early As, on. Yeah. Mjolnir is out. He is dead. <laughs> and I feel like a character died when Mjolnir died. Yeah. I, like That's like Cap's shield breaking. That's like if Spider-Man lost his arms like so he couldn't yeah. web shoot anymore. That's just... I'd, yeah. I'd say it's like no. if Iron Man broke his suit, but he breaks all of his suits. Yeah, so <laughs> this movie was kind of I had an Iron Man three vibe of like, what is Thor without Mjolnir? It so turns out he's just as badass without it. Yeah, if not more. Yeah, because he it was kind of like he was more <laughs> badass without it because he can't, had to like prove himself to be a hero without his tool. Yeah, yeah. It's a really good like story about Thor. You know, just. 
keeping up his hero league duty without his main power source, or so he thought. Turns out the power was in him all along. All this. Yeah, it was. Stuff. It was just a yeah. tool for him to focus. Yeah, it was a tool I, for him uh, to like focus like that and hold back his power so he doesn't destroy everything. Yeah. Well, I want Mjolnir back. I, I mean, Mjolnir is obviously great to have. He's a hammer yeah. that makes really cool sound effects and comes back and forth to him. Like at the end of the day, Mjolnir throws it to needs fly. to be back. Yeah. He's he he's no. He needs Mjolnir. I don't care yeah. what how they bring it back, but he needs a Mjolnir. But then Thor kind of gets his ass kicked by Hela. Easily. Loki calls down the Rainbow Bridge. They're going through the Rainbow Bridge back to Asgard, and Hela is fighting them mid teleportation, so they get <laughs> knocked out of it and end up on Sakaar, this Which... junkyard. Slave planet? Yeah. Slave gladiator planet? No, we don't like the word slave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, and then uh, for some reason. I guess the teleportation does some kind of quantum physics thing because Loki Loki went yeah. there like months before. Which I thought that was really up. interesting yeah. how they did yeah. that. I, I thought they said it was something to do with the planet. Like that planet. Maybe that planet. Oh yeah, because it's like an in-between. Yeah. Because he said he'd like, been here for weeks or months or whatever. Yeah, yeah like time he moves was, differently because all the vortexes or something. He was so charming that yeah. he was like Jeff Goldblum, best friend. I mean the Grandmaster's yeah. best friend. Yeah. I call all his characters Jeff Goldblum. So then, you know, Thor lands, gets arrested. It's pretty funny. And then uh, Stan Lee has this awesome cameo <laughs> of this guy with a robot arm. He's the barber, and he just cuts Thor's hair. And it's, you know, Stan Lee being Stan Lee, so it's hilarious. But then Thor has his short hair. I liked him with short hair. I thought he looked really cool with it. And yeah. then Jeff Goldblum makes his grand introduction as the Grandmaster <laughs> and Jeff Goldblum man. God he was just so funny. He It's my <laughs> birthday <laughs> Oh yeah his orgy ship. <laughs> yeah his orgy ship he kept calling him oh, man. Lord of Thunder instead of God of Thunder. <laughs> talking about his sparkles. He had his sparkles. <laughs> he was just so demeaning and charming to Thor. It was just great. And then Thor meets up with arguably one of the best characters in the movie. Cord. Now he is a rock man, he's a Cronin. Uh, we saw his race in the previous Thor movie. Thor one shotted the rock yeah. guy, just yeah. spun his hammer and killed him. But Cord is just one of the best characters in this movie because he looks super intimidating, but he does not sound intimidating. Oh, he, just, oh, he's he like, is so nice. He's just like, hey man, Cord, <laughs> we're Cronin. Yeah, this is, is Meek, he's got saw blades for hands. <laughs> like Cord was just constantly hilarious the just, entire oh, time. Another day, screen. another dog. <laughs> yeah. And every time he meets somebody new, just hey man, yeah, <laughs> hey man, we're gonna jump on this ship, and get out of here. <laughs> Oddly enough, that was a director of the movie playing Korg, I found out. Yeah, that, that was, was hilarious. Really hilarious. But Korg was great. Meek, although he didn't have any lines, he was funny. Yeah. Um, and then. You know, Thor goes into the Colosseum and fights the Grandmaster Champion, who, as we saw in the trailers, is the Hulk. He yeah. apparently flew the Quinjet either into some some wormhole in yeah. space, or more than likely, it was like in the Dark World. Thor, whenever Loki and Thor drove that ship into that chasm, and it was like. A breach between worlds. Yeah, I'm guessing been, it was it something like that. might have been one of those. Because I don't know if the Quinjet has space capabilities or not. No, but, it probably does. I mean, it yeah. could. It's Stark based, so who knows. <laughs> but either way, Hulk flew the Quinjet to Sakaar and has been there for two years. Hulked out the entire time. Which I'm guessing is why the Hulk is now able to speak. Yeah. Because Hulk... As he's talking finally and is just awesome. Yeah, it's not like eloquent full sentences. Yeah, I mean it's, it's the same. It's Hulk definitely key. like an improvement. I was yeah. afraid of that because of the super cheesy Hulk cartoon from like the '90s, where uh, no, Hulk talking doesn't resonate with me most of the time. But this time it worked. And well, if he says like broken English type 
yeah short burst sentences it works but if he's just like saying paragraphs it's not that good. yeah yeah like in uh hulk versus wolverine when he's just like hulk smash little man little man leave hulk alone <sighs> yeah stuff like that it's great right. but and now we have hulk finally doing it in the marvel cinematic universe because he talks to the word because it's like, no, you like Banner, not Hulk. And Thor just like, oh, I don't like Banner. He's, <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, I got my numbers and my test tubes, and you're just, you get stuff done. And then later in the movie, yeah. Banner's just like, no, you only like me for the Hulk. And Thor's just like, what? No, I don't like the Hulk. <laughs> He's so stupid. He's oh, smash, smash. <laughs> but their fight was really great. It um, is just a relatively even fight for the beginning of it i'd say and then hulk gets mad but then thor taps into his odin force type powers or something whatever it odin is force it was just lightning yeah, yeah it, well, was, it was just it showed odin and was, then he got yeah. the powers yeah it was so like i don't know a, what it, it is. might have been a little touch of the odin force or just his powers waking up or something but either way yeah. thor's full power briefly shows there and he knocks the hulk out more or less and then you know grandmaster just like oh my champion i can't have him losing so they you know use thor's neck taser and just <laughs> knock him out oh man the best part when the hulk came out though well besides the yes we worked together from the trailer yeah was loki's reaction when he was just like oh i gotta go yeah loki <laughs> was just like oh my god i i need to get off this planet and then Thor trying to do the the Black Widow calm down thing from <laughs> Avengers Two constantly. Like, oh, it's it's the, sun, it's the sun setting, big guy, and trying to grab his. That hand was hilarious. <laughs> Even when he was Banner, he kept saying, that. "Yeah." This all-out battle for Asgard ensues. Hulk fights a wolf in a very funny scene where he does he redoes the thing where he jumps out and doesn't turn into Hulk right away, like because <laughs> yeah. he did that in the first Hulk movie where with Edward Norton, he just was like. Tried to turn into the Hulk. He's like, "Oh crap!" Boom. And then like it was this Hulk. time he just <laughs> splats down on the Rainbow Bridge. Yeah, yeah. that was and Hulk fighting a giant wolf. That just, it was. It awesome. was epic. <laughs> yeah. And then Thor is fighting Hela the whole time. It's getting kind of just getting his shit rocked. Getting his yeah. He yeah. got his ass handed to him. And, uh, the executioner gets his guns. Des and Troy <laughs> <Yeah>. just <laughs> yeah. Shooting through Asgardian zombies. Nah, no. They Thor came up with the crazy plan of resurrecting Surtur, who he destroyed in the beginning. Resurrecting Surtur at full power and destroying Asgard. So he will, <laughs> yeah. by proxy, destroy Hela. Because apparently, even with his full on lightning powers and Loki and the Hulk, they can't do it. I think, they, I think they could. That have. strong, apparently. But. Hulk's just like in the water at that point, and Loki is, you know, Loki, he's not that good in a fight. Valkyrie is cool, yeah. and was just like wrecking shop on most people, but I guess Hela was a little more than they thought she would be, so their best plan was to <laughs> fight an enemy with a greater enemy, because like Thor has his visions of Odin. And Asgard isn't a place, it's a people. So if the people survive, then Asgard will live on through the Asgardians. So they load up on this ship, you know, with Korg and yeah. me. Yeah. Hey, me. Hey, me. <laughs> and then, you know, Surtur just does his thing and destroys Asgard. And you see it get destroyed, but, and it's a really cool looking scene, but it's not that, like, heartfelt really because Thor kind of just like sloughs off yeah. at his home he grew yeah. up in for like eons more than likely just it's gone and he is just like eh. yeah yeah like he, he reacted to it like he's a character from Dragon Ball Z and was like yeah we'll yeah. just wish it back like <laughs> that was the strangest part to me it's like every heartfelt and emotional moment was immediately followed by we don't care or comedy yeah yeah like I think they let Odin's death stew for a little bit, but it was just yeah. There wasn't yeah. enough seriousness in the movie. Like it was too funny the entire time to me. 
Now, not necessarily a bad thing, but like they could have. Yeah. There, there's a yeah. balance between a straight up comedy and an action, funny, lighthearted Marvel movie. I think there's a balance they can strike where it's not just hilarious the whole time. And Thor treaded the line. It was very much on the line and kind of went more towards the comedy side towards the end because the, him and Loki not really caring that Asgard got destroyed was just... <laughs> I don't yeah, know. It was, it was just it was a little out of character. Yeah, out of character. Well, in that end credits scene. Oh, yeah. End credits <laughs> just set up for everything to go down instantly because they're, you know, we're just like, hey, Meek, where are you from? Let's go start a home there. And then, you know, Korg's just like, oh, Meek's dead. <laughs> Stepped on him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then they're going to go back to Earth. So Loki's just like, I'm not that welcome on Earth. And then they pull up on this big ship, and I'm sure. You can guess it's Thanos' ship, and then yeah, that's it. That's it. We'll that's find all out we get later. Well, Loki, you know Loki grabbed that inf that uh the Infinity Stone, the Cosmic Cube. Oh, he oh, had. He, had to. he, he was had in the treasure to. room, and he looked right at it. You know he's got it, and you know he's giving it to Thanos. And they even made a jab about Loki being predictably betraying people, and yeah, you know he's doing it again. It's and gonna it, happen. Yeah. He might be a triple agent. He might be gonna betray them, and then betray Thanos later. We'll see. Yeah, we don't know. But it was a very good setup for Infinity War. Yes. One thing I thought was a little odd was the way they portrayed Meek. Because he's actually the same race that was in uh, the Sakaarans from Guardians of the Galaxy with the black face things. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. Like, he's supposed to be a member of that race, so I don't know why he was like a purple grub. Maybe that's what the babies look like. But. But overall, Thor Ragnarok is a great movie, easily the best in the Thor franchise, but not necessarily the best MCU movie. Like, it's good, but at the same time, it undercuts any serious moment to go for comedy, which is a lot of Marvel's criticisms from some of the fans, is that it's too comedy-based. But I thought it worked in a lot of scenes. Some scenes that you could have had a more of a somber tone in, like Odin's death and Asgard's destruction. But, yeah. you know, it was pretty funny. It was pretty good. I would say overall, we're going to give it about an 8 out of 10. Yeah. It was good, not It was great, fantastic. not perfect. It was, yeah, it yeah. was great, not perfect. Yeah, it had its flaws, but they were few and far between that it's a good enough movie to have good pacing and good enjoyment.